you're in the movie It. Slowly moving. I was like, <laughs> was there a clown holding it? <laughs> <laughs> we all float down here, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Kindred Spirit Podcast, a show all about the board game Spirit Island. Here we'll talk about analytics and strategies within the game, as well as a plethora of other topics that can be found within it. These guys won't get out of my house, so we may as well do a podcast again. (laughs) So so Laura's still here, I'm still here, John's still here, we're just going to keep on going with all these great characters. Still here. Woohoo! Don't sound so excited. (laughs) You promised me queso, that's why I'm here. Alrighty, I'm just going to get right into it. So next up on our list was Vengeance. Oh dear, Vengeance. (laughs) We were so excited for this spirit. I had such high hopes for this guy. You had planned out combos? I did, I know. I even made combos off of this guy's player board exclusively. I didn't Mm. even know what his cards were. Then I got his cards. I'm like, oh boy, this guy is great. And (laughs) Final Vengeance got nerfed. (laughs) Good night. Every card changed. John, do you remember what I first told you when I opened up Jagged Earth? And you were like, dude, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? When I looked at all the spirits and stuff. You remember what the first thing I told you was? <laughs> was it about vengeance? It was. I said, dude, vengeance has me worried. <laughs> <laughs> vengeance has me worried. A lot changed. So much change. A lot of his stuff got nerfed. And so maybe his ceiling isn't as high. Okay, well, I guess I'll see it in practice. Oy. Oof. So I have played Vengeance, and I guess he can be successful for a lot of people. Uh, (laughs) Man, we had such a a high of lure, Uh, and now we're (laughs) starting off this episode great. So I don't mean to say that What's our lesson here? Don't make a hype list. (laughs) Don't get excited. I was not disappointed by anybody, because I didn't know what they would be. Uh, That's why you married me. (laughs) That's a joke there. I was going to let it slide. (laughs) If you have no standards... (laughs) Anything works. Somehow the burning plague has like an apropos joke. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> anyway, so here's the thing with vengeance. I'm going to make a statement and then I'm going to go and explain the statement through the next few minutes. And that is, I really feel as if vengeance no longer really has a choice to be damage dealing or disease heavy. I feel as if this guy with his nerfs is a little bit more on rails now than his beta version was. And as a result, that really desaturates a lot of the appeal with this guy. Why? Because, well, yes, this guy is a disease user, but he is also a fire damage dealing blight user. He's a redliner. A redliner is a term that I use for myself for someone who pushes a game to its turning point like the blight threshold, but can survive it and do a lot of damage with it. So the other redliners, that would be stone, Mm -hmm. that would be probably volcano, and most of course would be wildfire, that would be a redliner. These are blight users. The problem with blight users is that for them to be successful, they have to screw everything everyone else over by blighting the land. And so Wildfire, I felt as if could walk that balance a little bit better because even though he's placing blight, yes, he has built in mechanics to remove blight. So for him, he likes to have just one blight in a land, but never two. Just enough that you can have the requirements for your cards, but you don't ever need two because that's going to be pushing the threshold way too close for your friends who maybe can't survive a blighted land as easily as you can. So it's a bit selfish for the blight user to be like, I'm going to tip it to my preferred way of playing, which is as a blight user, I like destruction. I like blowing stuff up. Then you have all the other people like River or Sharp Fangs or people like Keeper like, don't wait, come on (laughs) man, come on. (laughs) No! As you go and flip the blight card over, they're just like, you I can did this. <laughs> you did this. If, if Sharp Fangs is ever playing a game with these people, he's like, oh, I'm just not going to use my first innate then. That's fine. <laughs> I'm just going to cover that up. So there's my statement. Now let's go and explain my statement. So the thing was, to me, I felt as if this guy could do a lot more damage consistently with his beta version. A lot of his stuff got tweaked. A lot of his cards either got changed or straight up removed. He lost that card, which just generates fear. It's no longer there. It's just gone. Furthermore, whenever he uses his disease to get fear, it's no longer two fear. That's what it was. Now it's just one fear. So mm. his fear got negated. Which is literally what yeah. used to be double. So right. it's like one and two doesn't sound like a lot, but when you start getting two each round, right. that's four it's, instead of it's just two. It's literally half. Yeah. Literally it half. It really just Gift of Fiery Vengeance. 
now is just simply fiery vengeance and it no longer does bonus damage based on how many destroyed presents you have it's just target spirit removes one of their destroyed presents from the game one fear and one damage in target spirits lands it used does to stack one Dang. damage it used that's to it stack. that's a pretty high price to pay for one damage like uh Remove now the, game. the reason why i think this guy's damage has been really negated was because they wanted to incentivize the player to go and get these damage multiplying things out there like mm -hmm. badlands tokens or in his case a blight token and you can you can use those tokens to stack the damage but see the thing is is this guy has three powers that can do damage two of them are fast and that's really nice so he has a lot of attacks from his starting hand. He has one from a card and two and eights that each do damage in various different ways. So if you have a lot of damage that's coming in, you can be like, hey, I can use damage on here and damage on there. And if you have multipliers, cool, you can do damage well. That is where this character shines. Here's the problem though. The thing is, is you require a lot of multipliers in order to get this guy to work because you really need a lot of blight because what if you can't find Badlands cards? Well, look at your damage. You can do one damage, eh, two damage late game when you have a ton of elements and when you have like your level fours, you can get up to three damage, four damage. Then you can start doing some pretty good damage to people, but that's late game. Early game? Are you kidding me? Doing one damage that's fast for the cost of removing a presence? Are you really going to destroy a presence for killing an explorer? It's not worth it. It's not. It's not worth it. So mm -hmm. what is the alternative then? Let them hurt you. Let yourself get killed. Now blight happens. Now disease shows up. Cool. Now you have your multipliers. When you have disease out there, once you have blight out there, each of these things can multiply damage depending on what power you're using. Then it looks a lot better. One damage with this card now goes and will do bonus damage because of the multipliers you have the Badlands that you may have found, the Blight that is acting as Badlands, the Epidemics Run Rampant, which does more damage depending on how many disease are there. Okay, now it's starting to make more sense. You really have to set the board for all of your damage multipliers, then your damage is going to be really good. That is what happened with me. What happened with me was I couldn't really stop anything or kill anyone. Yeah, I could kill a thing here or there, but not nearly at the rate that I needed to to successfully keep the board from blighting or whatever without committing to a blighted board or a blighted thing. So what I mean by that was I felt as if before the island is blighted, this guy is underpowered. Mm. After the island is blighted, this guy is overpowered. So I really felt as if there was no choice Yes, you can use disease to prevent a build, but you really don't want to. Why? Because you're going to prevent a build, but you haven't been killing people, so there's a ton of people on the board already. And if you leave disease, you're going to get fear for it, which you're probably going to want. Besides, preventing just one building when there's 50 people on your board, what's another? And it's, so, it's a struggle to get disease compared to the beta I version. Know, it's, it's a struggle really, to get disease really out there. It's really difficult. Okay, I'm the disease guy. How do I get disease out there? <gasps> Literally one card. It used to be in a growth. One card and a growth option. That's it. But if you do the growth option one, it's either a disease or you get a presence. So I wish they wanted to change that because growth used to be both. You place your right. presence and with your presence, thematically it made sense you're bringing disease right. along with you. Yeah. And so I think as if late game, that one's okay. Because when you're fully upgraded, when you have all of your presence unlocked, spit disease out like crazy. I really do think that this guy can be a lot better with disease once you've already committed to the damage. Mm -hmm. You see, this guy has an identity crisis in my opinion. You can be a token user or you can be a damage dealer. Or at least, that's what I thought it was. Nope. Here, this guy commits to the damage way more than he does the disease. Like, when you look at Keeper, yes, he can do damage, but he is a wild token user. Sharp Fangs is a beast user. They have that identity with this token. This guy really doesn't do much with disease. He just lets it sit there. Yes, that's unique to him, but guess what? He needs to let it stay there. He needs to keep the disease there. Why is that a problem? Because that's not a choice anymore. In order for me to be successful with this guy, listeners, I had to just let them attack me. It was so weird. I literally sat there playing cards here and there when I could. And honestly, this may sound weird. I just spammed my second growth option mm -hmm. because the thing is I can't do damage to people. Maybe an explorer, but if I do damage to an explorer, guess what? That's an explorer. Big what? I have cities. I have towns that are building up, killing my Dahan and whatnot. Now, of course, this guy I don't think can really use Dahan. Yes, he can use Plague Bearers, but they're all too busy dying. <laughs> and I, am, I don't have any defend cards I was finding, nor do I have access to defense. You had talked about Lure being like one of the top solo spirits. I think Vengeance might be the worst solo because, again, there's only... I really think that. There's only he two might absolutely be the worst. I think it might be the worst. So what happened with this guy was it was so strange because I had to just sit there and let the bad guys hit me. Sure, because it's way too lucrative to die. 
Once I die, Fiery Vengeance gets one more ammo for it, which means more fear when I use that card, and it can use that card more often. A Disease shows up. That's the most reliable form to get Disease out there quickly while also upgrading. And a Blight enters, which is bonus damage mm -hmm. for more multipliers. That's three good things that happen when you die. So why <laughs> should I bother allowing my Disease to build like the normal way? Like, in a future expansion, I would love to see a Disease spirit that isn't tied to this Blight mechanic. You know what I mean? Like, I want a Disease guy, not a Disease disease and blight user this is a mm. this is not a disease user who uses blight this is a blight user that uses disease there's a very big difference and i think that between the two destructive people i want to play wildfire more than this guy because at least he could clean up stuff when i was playing this guy i was playing on a team luckily i had more players on the team so that the threshold was a little bit higher but the other guy i was playing with was new he was playing his river and he was blighting a lot too mm. just because he literally the second time this player's ever played the game now i would not have picked vengeance normally when playing with a new player but like I said, my rule is I must play the next guy on my list. This yeah. was the next guy on my list. I said that I think you can have the choice with this guy to be disease or damage. Ugh. Not really. And the reason why I'm kind of disappointed with this guy was because in my experience with one game, by the way, you could just hear me complain for like these past 10 minutes and be like, <laughs> dude, you suck with this guy. Yeah, I probably do. But here's the thing. It was way too lucrative to die. So while I'm dying, I may as well just completely spam my second growth option. By like turn three, I was already upgraded. Because I guess what? I only had nine presents to get through before I was fully upgraded. Why? Because you start off with three on the board and one you destroyed. start with one is already destroyed. So what is it? I think you start off with three. Point being, by turn four, I was fully upgraded. Eh, that may be a little bit of an embellishment. Maybe it's more like turn five, but it was around there. It was close to it. Then my spot was completely blighted, and then there was blight everywhere. Usually one blight on every land. One of my lands had two blight. So that's really good for me. Then when I started doing damage, I had disease. I had blight. I was yeah. killing people so fast. So I see the value this guy has. Don't get me wrong. Once the board is set, this guy can go ham. That's what I meant by when I said pre-blight, this guy is underpowered. Post-blight, this guy can be overpowered. What I mean by that is just, I mean, I was doing eh, one damage, turned out to be five. Do one damage here, turned out to be four. One damage here, turned out to be three. One damage here, that's six. Like, look at these multipliers. I had bonus damage from Blight, which is being counted as Badlands, mm -hmm. and I had disease. So when I did Epidemics Run Rampant, it was, oh, you do one damage per disease, then plus one damage per disease. So if I had like two diseases there, that's like four, then I had some Blight in there, so it's really five or six. So you can really see it now how just one damage could just turn into the big problem for the invaders so it's like once they've hurt you then your payback can happen i can see how the ease of damage can be really fun for players and it was very satisfying to see these guys that have been hurting me this whole time get wrecked because i was like pow 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 but like i said i felt like a blight user i didn't feel like a disease user mm -hmm. sure this guy uses disease but let's be honest in order to be truly effective you need to have your multipliers and your multipliers generally are going to screw over other other people river that was on my board that poor guy he could not go wherever i was he had to stay away yeah you don't want to die because yeah. he's gonna get wrecked and by guy i mean my buddy who was playing river now, luckily i had volcano on my team which was the other guy so he was just on his own mountain he was adding blight so i wasn't going onto his mountains and so we were fine there point being the blight threshold was being pushed way way too close we even got to one dead serious we got to one blight and one we didn't blight. even have a blight card we just had yeah. five for player three players that's 15 plus the original original three so you know three plus 15 we had 18 blight there one more and we would have died wow so i can see it i'm sure that there's a fence that you can walk i'm sure that there are ways that i can go and play this character much more effectively than i did but like i said in order to be effective i'm like wow i don't really want to settle for just this piddly amount of damage because doing one damage two damage maybe even three damage that doesn't really do a whole lot when the bad guys have been weapons free this whole time and there's like two cities there's three towns there's five explosions Explorers. Like, this is not cool, guys. In order to be effective, and my board, for my first impressions, I had to let them kill me. And I had to blight the land, and I just don't like that. Ugh. So he's mm. on rails, and I feel as if you don't have the choice to be as much of a disease user or a blight user. I really feel as if you are incentivized, in order to be truly effective, to be exclusively a blight user with some disease on the side. Two things before we get into Laura's impressions. I think, so you had just gotten done playing Lure Deep Wilderness before Vengeance. Yep. And if anyone's been to Cedar Point, that's like going on the Millennium Force and then riding the Blue Streak. <laughs> <laughs> so you just had like this rush of emotions and right. excitement and going over the loop-de-loops and, you know, plumbing when, down when 300 feet. When I was Lure, feet. Vengeance was on the field. He didn't seem that bad then. 
But maybe it's because Lure was there. <laughs> yeah, because Lure makes everything better. So you get to like one know. of the most damaging, or just a very strong spirit of yeah. Lure, and then you go into Vengeance, had to be tough. Like, he seems worse because the clash was so sudden. Yeah, it was it just could like, be. I think it was like cold water to the face. Yeah, Second, and late game, you can, like I said, use that growth option to have yeah. a lot more disease. So once you secure a clear board, spit disease like crazy. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Mm-hmm. That can be done. But like I said, so much damage had already been dealt in order to get there. I think the second thing you said, I want a disease spirit. Mm-hmm. And I think that is totally capable of happening because we got Sharp Fangs, who was like the beast user. And then yeah. what did we get in Jagged Earth? Many Minds. Mm-hmm. So, so I think, I don't think Trickster is the last Strife user spirit. Right. I think you can definitely come up with different ways to use these tokens. Yeah. So what you're talking about, I think actually might happen of just like the disease among the land and you're just yeah. disease tokens. Like what if it was like a worm spirit? Yeah. Or, I don't know. Like What's synonymous with play? Like a vulture or something? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It'd be kind of cool. Ooh, a vulture would be neat. Or, oh, the, the spirit. You know, a rat death. spirit. Yeah, yeah. rat. So so, uh, many minds is kind of a red spirit. I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But, but yeah. yeah, I'm just saying. I think the doors open there's hope. for yeah. yeah. There's, there's hope. hope. I played Vengeance once. <laughs> what I remember about it, because I have blocked everything else out of my memory apparently <laughs> about it, was I did not care for it, and I thought that we could take our lizard out of her cage and set her on the board, and she'd be twice as effective. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You guys just have a pet gecko around. in real life, an actual pet yeah, gecko. Asterisk, it's a gecko. She's so cute. Here's Our a- lizardy thing. <laughs> well, when she's crawling on your arm, the little feet are like... It tickles. She's so really fun. And she jumps on your face. And it's actually <laughs> She is really a jumpy funny. thing. Two things. See, I'm having more fun talking about <laughs> the a gecko. gecko. <laughs> two things Literally. I didn't know about geckos. At least the one we got. One, they're nocturnal, so I never see it. And then two, they last... Last. That sounds so terrible. <laughs> they live for 15 to 20 years. So I didn't know I was signing on to that contract. <laughs> Do you know that if you get a parrot, like a macaw, those tropical birds, you actually have to put it in your will? We have a friend it, who just got a parrot. I Maybe did not she know that. Really? Because seriously, there's a good chance it might outlive you. Wow. Same with like what, those tortoises. There are a few tortoises that oh, are the yeah. same. Oh, yeah. But tortoises if you have a pet new. tortoise. We're like, you know that going into it. John know. just got one because my roommate a couple years ago got one. We're like, this is fun. She's like, do you want one? And he's like, yeah. Sure. Three to four <laughs> years, right? It's a tiny little thing. No, it lasts for 20 years. Completely off topic. I went to a PetSmart one time and I was just going through the aisles and there was this balloon that I saw just in the middle of an aisle a few aisles down. I was like, okay, maybe a kid was standing over there with a balloon and turns out there wasn't any kids there. There wasn't anything. So there was just this balloon sitting there. I was like, okay, it's kind of weird. I had looked at another thing, looked at another thing. I looked up and the balloon had moved. I'm like, oh, maybe like a draft from like the door opening. And yeah. I looked at the balloon and it was slowly moving. You're in the movie It. Slowly moving. I was like, <laughs> was there a clown <laughs> holding it? <laughs> we all float down here, Ryan. <laughs> 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 so then the funny thing was is I saw the door open then I saw the balloon turn around and just start going really fast towards the door then the door closed because whoever came into the store closed the door then the balloon just slowed down started going away door opened again and then the balloon was getting really close to the door and then a disgruntled employee just went over <sighs> went and can someone grab Wilson I'm like what <laughs> guy picks up a turtle who Aww. has a balloon tied around his waist Wilson. and they said yeah he's an escape artist whenever the door's open he tries to beeline it for the door so we put a balloon on him to find smart. him I'm like it's so cute this little Wilson smart. he That's just walking around pet smart I'm like hey Wilson he's so cute I wanted to pet him anyway that was cute that was completely unrelated Laura so. more thoughts that was about it yeah. the just... artwork is good <laughs> oh the artwork is so cool and we make our own presence tokens I'm sure John has talked about that you were there when we talked about it in the podcast oh yeah the shrinky ding I forget a lot of things <laughs> like me <laughs> john made some very cool tokens for him and they will probably never see the light of day again so Aww. that's kind of sad i forget what so was harsh. the symbol that you used for the so presents? i actually you know how the disease kind of like a circular type thing yeah so i don't know what's it called like a cyclone or a no, spiral it's just like spiral. a spiral yeah yeah, yeah yeah like a swirl no hang on kinda so like a chocolate vanilla swirl only with tetanus and venom death. <laughs> <laughs> so i made little like gecko lizards but i tried to swirl them ah, like the disease like the tail or like Right, exactly cool. the tail. So, right. and then I did this face for the reminder mm-hmm. tokens, and they looked beautiful. We should frame them. There you go. Because that's the only way we'll see them. <laughs> did not care for this spirit. Okay, I actually now I'm though, we to feel do bad. still have the printout of. I don't want to talk about that. Oh, <laughs> the beta that we found. Oh, the online. beta version. Well, like I said, we made the hypeless stuff based on beta version content. And so it when really someone feels released if... beta version stuff, we may or may not have printed one of them. Hashtag <laughs> not my <laughs> vengeance. <laughs> Hashtag killed my printer ink. Um, <laughs> so much red. <laughs> but you're almost like, I kind of want to pull that one back out again and just paste it over know. top of this one Aww. and be like, there, fixed it. Yeah, we. 
we can make him work. I think if you can get a good team, like make sure you have someone else that can survive the blight he adds. Maybe you have Earth that's constantly helping your ratio by keeping his side of the field completely blight free so that all the blight can be on Vengeance's side of the board instead. Mm -hmm. That way the ratios are changed more in Vengeance's favor. It can look better. But like I said, you told me that Lure was a great independent spirit. Yes. I agree. I think that this guy is only good independent when he blights everything. And that's a risky thing because I think, yeah. if you're playing with a blight card, what if you get one of those sucky blight cards? Yeah, I know that there's some blight cards that are like, eh, yeah, some but that blight can cards. torpedo your whole entire game. Right, because then it's like, eh, purge, jagged earth rules. <laughs> Stick out the ones you don't like. I like that rule. I think that's a great rule. Ryan's my other rule is going to be, take a, <laughs> <laughs> my other rule is take a Sharpie and fix what you don't like. So we're going to change or a disease to and a disease. Yay, that, that, is a, that is a topic that we have coming up, which is some jagged earth accessibility and difficulty changes that are now available to the player. But whatever. We can we'll talk, talk about, about that later. About that. Yeah. One thing I remember when you played Vengeance, I remember me and Tim were yelling at you to like, can we please not let these build? And you're like, no, I want my disease out there. We oh, were yeah. like, arguments we started during the game of just like, Laura, right. this cannot build here. And she's right. like, well, here's the thing. Leaving though. my disease. Dang it. <laughs> Okay, the one positive thing I can definitely say was Epidemics Run Rampant used to require two disease, now it requires one. Yay. But here's the thing, though. This guy likes to have disease because if his disease lingers, it can continually do damage and it generates fear. Right. Which is cool, but... Like, Difficult did, for the other players. But look how just... valuable it is to let it sit there. And just looking at my cards, like two of them, Target Land has to have disease. So if you take away my disease, I can't do anything there. But like, we don't like buildings. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys can go over on your corner. You have this <laughs> one guy that's just a sadist that's just like, I can be successful <laughs> if I hurt my... Like, if, you know, right? pain. if there's pain and everyone else is like, dude, stop. And he's like, no, I have to. But the problem is, is like I said before, I felt as if it was a choice where it's like, well, if I don't do blight damage then i'm gonna have to settle for some low damage but at least i'm doing build prevention mm -hmm. here though it's like i can't do squat like you said look at my cards yeah a lot of them require disease look at my innate one of my best ones requires disease so you sit there just watching the board go down in flames as the other people yell at you I it's will great. say one thing. Vengeance for our game really accelerated the game significantly. <laughs> to almost make us lose. Yeah, and by that, I mean, like, we lost by turn five. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts, John? So, I had a great game. <laughs> <laughs> and that's <laughs> fine. That is fine. I did not, but... Okay, so I think sometimes with Vengeance, you need to be catered to more than other spirits. Yeah. So that game that Laura was talking about where it was a surprise birthday party for her, I actually played as Vengeance that game. You did? Yeah. You blocked it out, remember? Oh my goodness gracious. Bad memories. You know, the human mind has this crazy, really cool ability where if there's something traumatic, it just like cuts it off, shuts it off. So the reason <laughs> I remember this... <laughs> reason, um, <laughs> I remember this because the other husband, he played Wildfire. As we've talked about, Another Wildfire user, also yep. uses Blight. So that really helped me. Our boards were touching. So yeah. I was able to do my extra damage very accessibly. Yeah. And we were kind of both using the same yep. Blight, which is just a very cool combination. Yeah, the both of you are like a kindred spirit. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> wait. <laughs> wait a minute. This of... just got meta. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when... Uh, name of the title. Ding. What was that for? Like cinema sense? <laughs> <laughs> roll credits. Ding. Ring. Roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> Which, um, if your dog really hates when there's ding noises, like elevators, and then gets spooked out and runs and hides in the closet, don't watch Cinema Sin. She yeah, would like, there's so many dings. Yeah. I true. remember when we did our telegaming with you guys over the oh. over the Zoom. Yeah, I had a smoke alarm that was low on battery, and when my smoke alarm's low on battery, they go like chirp, chirp, and they chirp. And she's like freaking out. You're like, why is she freaking? Out? I was like, oh. we couldn't hear it because you know it's like over the zooms and whatnot, and we're like speakerphone talking to each other. But Sedona was going insane. Yeah, and that's and your dog. Name, oh, so yeah, that's my dog's name. She was just going insane. We're like, what is wrong? Calm down. Chill out. You're normally a chill dog. And then we, we thought finally... just a bunch of mailmen kept coming up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so then much Ryan finally sent a snap of something happening on their side and we heard the chirp. Yeah. And they were like, oh yeah, that's just happening in the background. You yep. know, who cares? And that was it. We figured it out. Fixed right. it. She slept for the rest of the game. I can go. tell how much we love talking about vengeance based on this conversation. So right another story about my dog. <laughs> and the other side tracks. Okay, vengeance. <laughs> what actually was another being catered to vengeance is we yeah. played Habsburg Monarchy and we played yeah. up to level four. So in lands without blight, they're durable. They have two health and destroy effects only do two damage. It's kind of like the counterpoint to England. They just figured out that people were spamming. The uh, loophole of destroying a building means that it doesn't matter how much health that building had. It just Thunder speaker, ocean, lightning. lightning. Yeah. Are just like, oh, cool. You have extra health. Don't care. Destroy. We actually didn't intend for that loophole. So we're going to make it a different with Habsburg. So <laughs> it's, yeah, I feel like Eric Royce was just like, Oops. anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> but they lose that extra health if they are in lands yeah. with blights. So I felt I was being so helpful to the team because I'm letting things get destroyed and right. I'm letting myself get destroyed and there's blight everywhere. People are actually like, no, we need that. Yeah. So I think if the situation is correct, yeah. I felt like I was doing such a helpful thing to the team where Laura was playing someone and only did two damage. And yeah. like, oh no, that's not enough. Oh, it's a blighted land. Right. So I think that's every trail. spirit in the game can be catered to. Mm-hmm. And if someone is catered to, that spirit will look better. I think that is a understood statement that can be applied to every single spirit. I have problems though with spirits that require to be catered to in order to achieve the same amount of success that other people do, even though those other people didn't need to be catered to. That's going to be something that you will see that's reflected on my tier list. Mm. The more someone is on rails and doesn't have a whole lot of choices, and the more that someone has to be catered to in order for them to achieve the same amount of success that other people can get, the lower they're going to be on my tier list. And I feel as if this guy is on rails because, like Laura said, you don't want to get rid of your disease. It's not yeah. really a choice. Yeah, you technically have a choice, but it's way too lucrative, way too lucrative to let your disease stay and to let yourself get killed. So then you're kind of more on rails and some people need to cater to you a little bit more. Yes, there are people that can help you. Like you said, I think Wildfire and Stone are probably your go-to. Maybe yeah. Earth on the side just to help with the ratios of Blight on the yeah. board. some Blight removal. But, I mean, like I said, poor River in our game, she was just like, ah! So much <laughs> And heaven help poor Sharp Fangs or Keeper if they were there. Now, they weren't there, but if they were, I would have felt really bad for them. So, anyway, I think maybe there can be some ways to tweak this guy to make him look a little bit better. Maybe there's a future aspect card that's already inbound to help him. But I really feel as if he got nerfed. From his beta, just to be clear. Oh, nerfed yeah, from, nerfed from the beta. I think Vengeance reminds me a lot of Serpent. Of just, like, the first two-thirds of the game are very mm. slow. Serpent is able to help so much utility, yeah, so much support. At least Serpent is helpful during that slow time. And Serpent isn't actively murdering the board. So right. Vengeance, like we've all stated, is like just flipping the switch of how we're used to playing. And right. it's completely different. So I think the second third of the game is where this spirit comes alive. There's right. hopefully Dude, a lot of once disease. once the land was blighted, I was slaughtering people yeah. with ease. Yes. Cheap cards that were one, cheap cards that were zero, doing six damage with zero costing cards, doing five so damage light. with one costing cards. There were so many multipliers like Yes, I know that if you get a lot of Badlands out there, other people can achieve that as well. But since he can use both Badlands and Blight for the same effect, he can use both, but mm-hmm. I wasn't finding any, so I had to use Blight and Disease. But I could get all this damage out there. That was cool. That was fun. That was something good this player does. My problem isn't the fact that this guy can be successful, but just later. It's just that I feel as if there's only one way to really get there. Yeah, you Unless you're really die. lucky with Badlands cards that mm, you find. But you don't want to depend on minor power right, luck. Right, right. But yeah, I think it's a slow burn spirit for sure. Yeah. I think you want the island to get blighted. You want to flip that card. Yeah. And mm-hmm. even if it is like destroy a presence, you want right. your presence gone. Because I remember when we were playing as Lure in our game. Last episode, we talked about how great Lure was and yeah. how we had Grinning Trickster and we had Vengeance on the team. Well, guess what? Even in that turn seven game, we blighted the land. We did. Why? Because Vengeance. Mr. Vengeance was flipping the card. Now we and rolled Vengeance with it. And Lure, smiling when that's happening. And <laughs> Lure, well, here's my problem. Vengeance forced that on everyone. What if I was playing as a character that dramatically did not want that to happen? The blight card we got wasn't so bad. I had to lose energy and lose a presence. Mm -hmm. But here I am as Lure that just completely did ace. I made no mistakes and yet I have to pay the penalty for this schmuck who just blighted the island. Like, dude, how come I have to suffer because you refuse to play as a team? Like, that guy's not a team player. You just have to very specifically pick who you're going to play. The only team that he could be a team player on is the The blight. Appropriately picked team. Yeah. So like he's not flexible and if you don't have a way to perfectly counteract or coexist with Vengeance, I really feel as if he is a horrible random team player pick. Like I'm just going to pick a name out of the hat. Uh, just not vengeance. Just basically accept that the islands can get blighted. Because, like I said, poor Trix and River and Lure were like, dude, what the heck? Like, I didn't do anything wrong. I kept all my lands from blighting, and yet I'm still getting hit by a blight card. Like, dude! In the summary of powers, the offense is maxed out. I wish yeah. there was, like, an asterisk of, like, one hour in. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you get real strong. You know how Starlight has question marks on all of them? Like, put a little asterisk, and then at the bottom of the board, what does the asterisk mean? <laughs> After. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when you're about to lose, right. then you can. Take so the when board, it... set it on fire. Literally. <laughs> Burn it. <laughs> because at that point, it's going to be so ridiculously infected that it might spark a flame just from you snapping your fingers. That's how mm-hmm. ridiculously unstable this board is. Anyway, I'm going to get off this hate trade. <laughs> so anyway, Shadows, base Shadows now has someone else that sucks with him. <laughs> ah, <I mean>, oh. <laughs> the jokes are plenty. All right, moving on. So Fractured Days split the sky. I was supposed to play Fractured Days on Thursday because sometimes John tells me who to play because that's the marriage we have. Um, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> You like being More surprised? Lies. I do. Sometimes I will go back to being like, I want to play Keeper and I want to play Thunder Speaker and Ocean all live long day. And so I oh, like it when John's yeah, like, here, I've same. set up, you know, the Beastie Boys and you're going to play this one and I'm going to play that one. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So he picked for me Fractured Day Split the Sky because that's one of the two I have not played yet. So we were playing with newer people. Yeah. So Laura, she needs things to be going on to keep her attention Oh, sometimes. newer people is in newer human players. Yeah, human yeah. players. So Sorry, for a second, I thought I'm like newer character. Gotcha, I do have gotcha. the attention span of a gnat. So when someone's trying to figure out what a sacred site means for River on a wetland, I'm like, Laura, you can be playing your game within a game with Fracture. And John's so good at teaching people. I'm a teacher, and I suck at teaching people. Like a literal... Like, that's my day job. Yeah, an actual teacher. <laughs> Hashtag talking in a mask for four hours straight. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, John was like, here, you can play this really, really complex spirit, very high complexity, and you can figure all of that out while I'm helping this other person with... The basic rules. Was this game that you were speaking of pre or post Starlight for you. Post. post Starlight. Post, okay. And I had done Starlight, but I don't know. Because there was Starlight's something... also very thinky. I was sitting there and I'm looking at these cards and I'm like, these are not cards, these are math problems. <laughs> um, I had to take remedial math in college because my ACT score was so low for math. Woof. Yeah. <laughs> And And then I fought to be in, like, really stupid people math because (laughs) I just wanted to have fun with that. Um, This isn't really good for, like, teaching youth of America to the people. Oh, I teach art. (laughs) Okay, okay. (laughs) I spell things wrong on the board. It's fun. No, but I'm sitting there and I'm like, this is, like, a math problem. I don't know what's going on. They do get algebraic Ah! at They do. Well, there's an added resource now that you have to think about. (sighs) Yes, there's energy. Yes, there's card play. But now there's time. It was just so bonkers. I just, like, had a little mini panic attack Mm. and then, like, spazzed out, like, one minute before we started playing and picked a different spirit that I'd played before. Before. So I've now opened yep. up Among Us on my iPad, and I'll be playing this over here while you guys talk about Fractured Days. <laughs> my baby! Purple sauce. <laughs> yeah. That game has taken the world over by storm. Who knows? With how long it takes to edit and post these episodes, who knows? Maybe that fad will die by the time it actually this <laughs> episode hits the air. <laughs> I... Oh, it won't. <laughs> I played Fractured Days, and usually we've talked about this. We do two-handed spirits. It's fun to see four yeah. tiles on playing the Playing multiple spirits playing at multiple the same spirits, time. Fun synergy like Laura and Matt I've talked about we like sure. our synergies and theme teams but mm-hmm. when we played this I wanted one. So oh, yeah. It yep. was just a two-player game. Laura played Downport, and I played Fractured Days. I love this spirit. This was incredibly fun to do. I had to look it up what the times three and times two meant. So that means you can do that two times yeah. then three times. Which, that wasn't immediately clear. It wasn't for me either. For me. The only reason why I got that right is actually because when I went into my game with Fractured Days, yeah. you texted me. You said, hey, really quick tip. This is something I had to learn later, and that actually was really helpful. That FAQ website for Spirit Island is very clutch. Yeah. And just to reiterate, for the purposes of clarity, guys, on Fractured Day's board, on his growth options, every now and then there's this little icon that says times two or times three. What that means is right above that particular thing, you can do that particular thing twice or maybe three times. So, for instance, on his third growth option, one of them says times three, either gain one time or gain two energy. That means of those two, you can pick one of them zero times and the other one three times. Or you can pick one of them twice and the other one once. Or you can pick the other one three times and the other one zero times. It's up to you. And I did not understand that at first. No, it wasn't very clear. And again, I'm sure it's in Jagged Earth Rulebook and it was online. So it was so cool where sometimes I needed a lot of energy. I just got six energy. Yeah. And sometimes, obviously, you need to make time. It was really fun, too. It's so fun to play. And again, I've talked about this on the podcast. I like helping others. There's something about... There's a very specific specific satisfaction and happiness yes. and joy with helping so, so, someone else. Do you think that's why you like green a lot? That I think support? So. I do. And in games, I really like support stuff generally. Okay. It's just a fun thing. And that's not necessarily this game only. It's just... I've I, never been that aggressive as a person or an offensive person yeah. if you're picking, like, uh, who you want to be in Destiny right. or World Warcraft or pick any MOBA or any type right. of, like, class game. I usually mm. pick the support. <clears throat> I like yeah. giving them health, giving them yeah, energy. Yeah, you said that you like playing as Mercy. 
I love playing as Mercy, Zenyatta, any type of healer in yeah. a game. Something about it. Instead of killing someone, I like helping someone. Right. I'm just a good person. You do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, like you said, this brings that gratification. So when I'm helping Laura do a slow power as a fast, yeah. it's just like, no, I'm not doing anything. I only have like one or two presents on the board, mm-hmm. but I'm making downpour that much more stronger yeah. where she is able to do foundation sink into mud in the fast yeah. before and, they even build up or something. And this guy's utility is pegged. Oh, it's so pegged. And Target Spear may reclaim a power card, oh, which was so, for Laura so as downpour, too. so useful. So right. amazing. Well, one of my favorite things is playing as a character that gets reclaim one on their tracks. It's mm-hmm. one of the reasons why I like Sharp Fangs, because he gets reclaim two. Shadow Sign of the Mist gets reclaim one. No, Green doesn't get reclaim one, but that's okay because he has other special things that make him feel unique. Yes. But I'm just saying, like, I really like getting that reclaim one. And this guy can, in a way, kind of make someone get that. Get that. And it's really nice because. Last game that I played of Spirit Island, I had a character that I was playing as that had claim one. And we had a lot of blight on the field. And mm-hmm. so I had a very cheap blight removal card. And so what I did is I always reclaimed that one. And since it was cheap, I was constantly doing it every single turn. Blight removal, blight removal, blight removal, blight removal. And it was really nice. And that's one thing that reclaim one can do. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do with reclaim. But what Fractured Days can do with that is give that kind of flexibility and possibility to literally any player on the team, mm-hmm. which I really like. One card that pretty much won us the game was the pass returns again. Yeah. We were about to go into the stage level three. Stage three, three. yeah. But because we were able to go back a turn, they didn't explore into two lands. Right. They didn't build in two lands, and we just delayed them enough where we were able to get terror level three victory before they really started ramping up. That is so Mm. cool, too. Like, hold up, bad guys. Before it bad gets worse, we were ready to dial it back. This is another spirit with untapped potential, I think, of just, like, can do crazy stuff. I can't wait we talk about your game because I got a little sneak peek of like the crazy cheese that you did. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> but there's so many cool things you can do and having that own personal like deck to pull from is that huge. That was weird, yeah. And something that the beta version did not have. That did was not something have. I had to relearn really quick. It's like, oh wait, hey, this is new. <laughs> For me, I got lucky where I got some damaged ones but I also got a defend card that I grabbed very nice. early because you're kind of, obviously spirits are weak in the beginning and I was able to move a presence because that is one of the options where where Laura's like, hey, this is about to blight. I moved four spaces away, pulled that defend card, I saw I had it, right. and saved us a blight yeah. experience. So it's just one of those things where it's like, we talked about a little bit, that like, used to be just go through the discard, but having your own personal deck, you can still pick and right. choose and be like, this will be useful at a certain time. Yep. Again, very cool with the theme and the lore of it, of just like this... It's not interdimensional. This eclipse, able to see into the past, into the future. Right. I'd and say that's kind of interdimensional. I mean, I that's that's kind of manipulation of time is definitely a cosmic brain something. Pain. Whoa. I never use poor time sideways. These cards are situational. So you never know yeah. when it's going to be effective. And they say that, honestly, some of your cards might not ever get played. Yeah. And that's that one. <laughs> loved, loved Absolute Stasis. Blur the Arc of Years was like my blight removal card. Yeah. And we've talked about it. This is another way to get to Han on the board. Yep. So I liked this spirit a lot. I think what interests me in spirits is when I know there's different ways to play them. You were complaining about vengeance. Yeah. <laughs> if there's only one way, it kind of bores you. It's like, yeah, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. Even, even some of the low complexity ones, like once I get to two energy for river, I know I'm just going to go bottom track and just get into that yeah. one, reclaim one. There's like, they fall into these like pigeonholes of what you're going to do with fractured days. I never know what I'm going to get in my own personal deck days that never were. Right. I never know how I can help my fellow spirits and what that slow fast is going to do right. or how poor time sideways might be game saving. Right. So it's a very interesting spirit. I thought time would be more difficult. Yeah. I didn't think it was. For me, it wasn't. You're just like, oh, read the card. Cost three time. Put it back in my track. I mean, I get... It felt kind of cool. It's a cool resource. In a way, actually. I felt as if I was doing it well, even for my first game. Like, here's a new thing. And all right, yeah. well, I'm kind of good on energy. You know what? Oh, let's go stock up on some time and Yeah, because I want to pay this. Because there's yeah. that one, you have to pay X per player. That was the one for the past uh-huh. returns again. So me and Laura yeah. had to prepare for that and be like, all right, stage three is coming up. We got to save for this. I got to make sure I have enough time. Yeah. And then, boom, we did it. Won us the game. So, there very cool experience. I got to boost up Laura is downpour maybe that's why i think downpour is s tier because i saw it at its like highest peak of mm. just like being fed and being able to reclaim more and being able to use yeah. fast powers and play a card play another one by paying its cost which is so huge for downpour i can play another card i only have one unlock because it yeah. takes so long for downpour to unlock second card play yeah so it was again perfect situation but it was just a very fun experience and just one i won't grow tired of kind of like starlight it's just like there's so many different ways yeah. to play this spirit yeah so i think might be the best new support 
Yeah, I mean, of the utility peeps, we got Serpent, we got Shifting Memory, we got this guy. But I, this guy, I think, has a more fuller equipped set of capabilities yeah. to be supporting. Yeah. To quote my brother with his stance on supporting people versus, like, direct aggression in PvP. Okay. He gets more of an enjoyment by doing just that to others instead of taking it away from others. So in a PvP game, if I have to get my happiness and joy by taking it away from you... He hates that. That's why he doesn't like PvP stuff as much because if I have to take away enjoyment from you, if I have to steamroll you and that's how I have fun because I killed you but, you know, it wasn't fun for you. If it wasn't fun for the other guy, it's not fun for him, which is why he always likes to do team buffing because he yeah. likes to take that happiness of, like, team buffing, team cohesion. That whole idea of team cohesion together and we're a team together. I'm helping you. I'm helping him. And usually we live in, like, a prideful player base where people usually put themselves first. True. But when you put someone else first, that really encourages, like, a, oh, you kind of feel kind of warm and fuzzy inside because it's like hey yeah I got you bro someone's got your back and this guy I feel as if really helps like that and so it's an overall positive experience for everyone yeah. no one's yes. getting negated right which is cool Yep. So, I remember when I had my game with Fractured Days Split the Sky, I was very pleasantly surprised. Very pleasantly surprised by this guy. This spirit was surprisingly flexible, mm -hmm. in my opinion. While well, I was looking at his hand, and I was like, well, I'm looking at his cards, and you talked about pass returns again and poor time sideways. Those are big ones that might not ever see the light of day. Yeah. So, that means your other two are probably going to be getting used. Well, in my game, the most used cards were easily Absolute Stasis and Blur the Arc of Years. Those are my go-tos all the time. Absolute Stasis was like an alternate version of Year Perfect Stillness. Mm -hmm. And Blur the Arc of Years, I was using all the time. It was fantastic because you can do a whole lot of things depending on what's in that land. You know, if there are no invaders or Dahan present, you can remove a Blight. So it's a Blight removal card, but it can also spawn Dahan and manipulate Dahan. It can also force bad guys to go into a build and ravage step. At first, that sounds like, why would I ever want that? But maybe you can orchestrate a situation where that's actually useful. Mm -hmm. So I did use the pass returns again. I only ever used it twice. Okay. And four times sideways, I used once. Okay. Just once. And it was more just to say that I did, frankly, and just to see how it kind of worked. And honestly, it's a double-edged sword because, you know, each invader action happens one fewer time on that board, but on the other board, it happens one more time. So it's like, uh, on one board, it's like they're going to be exploring and building and ravaging some more times. On the other one, it's doing less. So what would be the best time to use this one? A uh, two-player game with lore where lore has everything killed. Mm. Then, hey, do this one. Hey, do all those things in extra time. Cool. No one's there. No one's there anyway so they're all dead so yeah just play this card with situational card play for sure. this card when you're playing with someone who's so ridiculously op that he can just destroy everything anyway anyway so i was doing this game as a two-player game and the other player was playing as earth and so many cards of ours were repeated between earth repeating it or this guy repeating it it was like cards get repeated are us like yeah. repeat are <laughs> us that was like the name of the business that we had oh it was so fantastic to repeat my first and eight countless times throughout the game. One thing that was really interesting though with this guy was I got fully upgraded pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I was able to fully upgrade pretty quick because when you pull time you pull it from your tracks too or pull it from your board or pull it from over here from your pool and so when I was pulling time I was like yoink 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 I'm pulling it from ahead of me so I could grow up faster and then when I was replacing it I was putting it on the back. I think that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I, think. I, I understand why they capped at three card plays and three energy because you can max out so quickly right. and green is kind of maxed out too. Right and like, that's same way in that same but way be, like you look at his growth options like boy i only have one presence adding thing well when you see that your time can be pulled from your track oh, okay you like just mm -hmm. upgrade 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 oh look at this thing it says gain three time one time i did that I was like one two three upgrade three times so i of course i didn't put those three presents on the board i just put those three time on my time pool mm -hmm. but still i was able to fully upgrade pretty quickly i was like turn two turn three four i was like hey hey I, I, well, okay hey wow i'm actually upgraded yeah all the way cool now like you said it's only three and three but what's cool though is that you can use your growth options Options to spike your card plays or your energy gain. Mm. So if you want, you can actually get up to, even though it says a maximum of three energy gain from your track, you can actually spike that so that it's nine energy. That's true. Or if it's card play, instead of going to just three card play, you can spike it to seven. Which is nice because then you can pull from your days that never were major side yeah. and pull a really Which is cool crazy. major that might be more expensive. I never got to either of those extremes. I only did more of a half and half kind of approach. Right. But what was really cool about this guy as a whole, in my opinion, 
was this guy with his first innate can apply cheat codes to other power cards. He can change the speed of them. He can reclaim them so they're not discarded. He can give an extra card play. Mm. So go ahead and find a card that's cool, whether it's for you or whether it's for a friend, and apply your cheat codes to copy and paste and paste and paste or change the speed. And so there were times where I would stockpile a card and one of the coolest, most cheese-filled plays I've ever done is that one where I had two slow Dahan cards where one was called a migrate and one was called a bloodshed. Mm -hmm. One of them is one damage in this land for every Dahan that's there and one of them is gather up to three Dahan and push up to three Dahan. Well, both of them are slow but what I was able to do is I was able to play both cards, make them both fast and repeat them fast. Because my buddy played Power Storm. So in the fast phase, I was able to move people, do damage with it, move them again because call and migrate says push. Then I did it yet again. Then I went and did it again all in the fast phase. It cost me a ton of time to do that but that's something I can do. Mm -hmm. And that was really unique. So I don't know if this is going to be a guy I can really go to as far as like what good thing are we lacking on this team we're lacking fractured days <laughs> so it's not like like have you ever been like hey we have an attacker we have a controller or we have a fear what are we missing oh we're missing a defense guy let's go grab a defender it's not like I'm looking at my team composition saying okay we have an attack we have a defender we have a fear guy what are we lacking we're lacking a utilitarian <laughs> like no not like that it's just you have your perfect team set up and then fractured days just boosts everyone he just helps somehow yeah and I can't tell you from the game start how he's going to help you but I know that throughout the way I'm going to do my best to help you because when is making a slow power fast not helpful when is giving an extra card play unhelpful when is getting a card back so you don't have to discard it that's these always are always helpful. good things so whether that's helpful for fear guys making fear more consistent making damage more consistent making damage faster quickly so that you can prevent a build that's going to happen perhaps or maybe a ravage that's going to happen perhaps what was cool though is i feel as if vital strength of the earth can be played one of two different ways of the various ways to play spirits i think he has two big ones he has dahan user that mm-hmm. is my sword and shield build for him. What I mean by that is he is a shield and the Dahan is his sword. He will go and defend with guard the healing land and his sacred sites and the Dahan can be his sword and do damage for him. Or you can go and be a major power user, which is maybe stack energy as fast as you can and go through the major power deck and just get some big majors and just go ham with stuff. So what happened was, is I was playing, as I said, with a new guy who was playing as Earth and it was his first time. And the other guy really liked the sword and shield thing. He just naturally went to defending the land and, and then using Dahan. So what I did is when I was building up cards and stuff, I also went Dahan heavy. With this guy, I felt as if it was pretty good because I have Blur the Arc of Years, which allowed me to add Dahan and push on. So I thought it was, hey, it was pretty cool. Absolute stasis can help me prevent bad guys from building and whatnot. Of course, there are some times where since the land didn't exist, I couldn't pull Dahan in or out of that land, which was a little bit harmful here or there. But still, absolute stasis is a pretty cheap card. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't too bad for me. Also, this guy is mobile. He can move presence with his third growth option, which is really nice that help with defending stuff because whenever you want to defend stuff and you want to have controlling stuff, you know, when you're controlling, you're moving people. And if you move them too far away from your area of control, you can't bring them back because, oh, I pushed them too far. Well, don't worry, I can move with them. Mm -hmm. Not every single turn, like as consistently as Downpour or certainly Mist or Starlight, perhaps, but he can move and that really helped with my Dahan control. Move four away. We've already talked about with Lure how far away four lands is. Right, and that was... across the entire island. It was really helpful for me to move along with my Dahan. Mm -hmm. But what really was great, though, was days that never were the private deck thing. Because here's what's cool. You can go and grab power cards from your private deck or you can grab them from the normal deck. Mm -hmm. If you do grab them from the normal deck when you discard one Adam. you discard two not three and one of those you keep of course and the other one that would normally be discarded actually goes to your days that never were once you actually reserve one for later do you ever take those scantrons where there's like it's multiple choice and there's four of them and one's never the option yeah and then the other one's is like probably not but there's always two, two that are really close it's like they both could be right I know he can keep both <laughs> the thing that's so cool with this guy is that when you pick a power card you can actually in effect in the way that i just described pick two cards yeah sure you only receive one immediately but since one goes into your private discard pile you can get that one whenever you want just another turn later with your third growth option so what this meant i told you that i had called a bloodshed and called a migrate both of those are great to han manipulating cards i actually got those ones at the same time that's cool what i did was i grabbed called a bloodshed first because that one did damage and i felt as if i already had some to manipulation Mm -hmm. with blur the arc of years so i'll just get called a migrate later and i did so instead 
of drawing four cards, picking one, I'm drawing four cards and picking two. It's mm. just that second one is slightly delayed. But seriously, how many times have you drawn a power card, regardless if it's a major or minor? Like, man, I like multiple of these. Some of these have my elements, but this one, I need to do this action. Right. It's and difficult. You just, yeah. And like, I really like this one. I really like this one. Sometimes they both give me the elements I need. And one's just, there's no right option here. It's just different. Sometimes yeah. it's really easy for you. Oh, this one. But sometimes there are a few that you want. And so it's like, oh, man. This happened to me with many minds once, like two were using beast tokens. Right. I'm just like, oh, I want both of these because this yeah. one adds a beast, but this one does damage. With right. It. You know, it's just like, right. It's difficult. But I like being able to hold on to two. I really like that. One thing that was pretty cool, though, I just want to comment something that you said, and that was the potential that the past returns again has. We only used it twice, but I was about to use it a third time when stage three happened. Mm. But like you said in your game, you were able to actually go and delay the stage three. That's actually really cool. It I think the capability to the hold game. off stage three is going to be like really dope mm -hmm. for the ability to buy just some more time for your friends, just some more time for this, for that. Or maybe you're in the first stage and you don't want to do another escalation effect for a specific adversary that you have from right. the stage two deck. Well, I would rather have another turn one card if I could. So let's go and skip a escalation card. Or, you know, you don't know which one you're discarding. So maybe you get rid of an escalation card. Or maybe you got rid of the dreaded coastal land card. Either way, you have that option to like buy time. Whether it's to keep stage two further away or to keep stage three further away. Just a little bit longer. Very helpful. I really like that. I think that's really cool. I think that's very unique. And there's just this one cool thing that I did that I really wanted to talk about. Which was a very specific way that I used Blur the Arc of Years. Which, by the way, this card, along with Absolute Stasis, like I said, is easily, I think, in my personal opinion, his best two. Not that they have a big effect, but they were the ones I kept coming back to. Mm -hmm. And as a reminder, every single card this guy has is fast, which is just really odd, but really cool. Something I could get used to. Like, sweet, fast powers across the board. I love it. Anyway, Blur the Arc of Years is notable for a lot of reasons, and one of the reasons why is because it's yet another Dahan spawning card. Rare. There are and three... wonderful. <laughs> there are three that come to my mind, listeners, and there are three cards before that I would always keep my mind's eye out for for the purposes of Dahan spawning. Those were Cycles of Time and Tide, Call of the Dahan Ways, and River's Bounty. These are always cards I have in the back of my mind that if ever Dahan spawning is a problem and mm -hmm. I need more of them, I'm like, I need to look for these cards. Now, I know River's Bounty is actually River's starting card, so you're going to need her to be on the field in order to get access to that card. I know that. But Blur the Arc of Years is now a fourth mm. that you can put away. So once again, your homework is to remember these four cards, y'all. That is Cycles of Time and Tide, Call of the Dahan Ways, River's Bounty, and Blur the Arc of Years. Two of them can be found in the deck. Two of them can be found in players' starting hands. So if you want more Dahan out there, either look for those cards or have River on the field or have Fractured Days on the field. So anyway, that's one cool thing that Blur the Arc of Years does, but we were looking at it, you and I were looking at this card for its Blight removal tendencies, mm -hmm. which I was able to use, and for its Dahan spawning capabilities and Dahan manipulation as far as pushing them capabilities, but we never really were a big fan of the whole go and the invaders, if they are present, they build and then they ravage. We weren't really a big fan of that. Well, one thing that was really cool, by the way, was one time there was a land that had a single Dahan and it had a Blight in it. I used this card on the that one, I made it to Han, pushed them out of there. Mm. Now it's just a blight. I copied this card again, did it remove the blight. Like, that's just like a nice little fun thing. Like, shot in the arm. I got another Dahan, put them where I needed to go, and I even removed a blight, which is fun. But it's cool that it has different options. I like that. Yeah, you usually don't see a card that can do three different things mm -hmm. and can be repeated, which is nice. Now, one thing that is pretty cool, though, was I was playing with Earth, obviously, and I had this really cool play with Blur the Arc of Years. So I was playing with Earth, and Earth obviously had his sacred sites out there. So let me paint the picture here for you. There were two lands on this board and one land had earth's sacred site in it and a single explorer so one sacred site and an explorer in the land next to that land in an adjacent one there was a single dahan in it okay what i did was i played blur the arc of years on the land with a single dahan in it i made another dahan then pushed the two dahan into that land Okay. Then I repeated the power on that land that I pushed him into. It's going to build a town. So now this land has Earth's sacred sites, one explorer, and two Dahan now. I play this card which says invaders build and then ravage. So that explorer built a town. Then they ravaged. 
So that's three damage, two from the town, one from the explorer, and there were two Dahan. So Earth's presence automatically blocked the three. The Dahan immediately countered attack for four mm. and killed it. Both the explorer and the town were killed, and we got a fear from it. That's awesome. Even though at the beginning of the turn, there was only one explorer and there was one Dahan in an adjacent land. So I was able to make another Dahan, move the Dahan, force the invaders to make a town. Then I forced them to attack, which Earth blocked for me because Earth's sacred sites automatically defended it for me. Thanks, bro. And then <laughs> the Dahan countered attack for four, killing it. I was like, ah, that's perfect. Good. That was the only time I ever played Blur the Arc of Years where I purposefully and intentionally used that card for the purposes of the invaders, if they are present, build and then ravage. I could see you using it on a diseased land, which would be cool. Yeah. It's like like, well, they build. There goes the disease token. Yep. So say it's like a city that you've strifed. Say Trickster's playing. Yeah. So you go ahead, build. The city doesn't build because the disease stops it. And then no damage gets through because it's strifed. Right. And then the counterattack of if you have Dahan there, there's the city's gone. Right. So there's some cool things set up. I think there could be some pretty cool possibilities with yeah. this guy. What I just described was just simply one of the things that worked. And yeah. that was with Earth and his sacred sites. And I was able to structure my strategies and my plays off of the capability that Earth was bringing to the team. But that said, I was really impressed with Fractured Days. I'm not sure Me when, too. like I said, I'm going to go and seek Fractured Days out for my team compositions. I really don't know when I'm going to look at a team and I'm going to be like, hey guys, do you know what we're lacking? We're lacking Fractured Days. But so long as you can play him well, I think that he can just be helpful to any team. So we've talked about invaders and how Lure just basically counters Russia at all yeah. their things. And how I had a good game with Vengeance against Habsburg with, you know, the Blight thing. Yeah. So the spirit is not a counter. So I don't think you're so. going against England, you need that destroy, you yeah. know, type of people who destroy and serve, do destruction. Right. Pick um, a guy who does counter that pick and then have this guy soup that guy up. Yeah, that's basically what I'm saying. Is just like you can't use this to be like, oh, this guy's perfect against Brandenburg Prussia. No. Yeah. But you are able to make other people who are the counter picks even yeah. more stronger. Mm. Which is cool. That is cool. One thing, though, one caveat with Fracture Day Split This Guy is he literally is, in greater than game's opinion, the hardest guy to play as. Yes, Starlight and Finder are also rated as very high, but his bar is actually the highest. Go and put Fracture Day side by side, either of those two. Mm -hmm. You'll notice his bar is actually higher than Starlight's and higher than Finder's. Laura, what scares you? Because you said you literally just pushed this aside and it's one of your last spirits you haven't played yet. What is so, I don't know, high complexity about Fractured Days? I don't know. I think it's one of those ones where once I play it and I understand everything, then it won't scare me quite so much. But it is just like unlike any other spirit out there. You're literally, like you guys have been saying, messing with the Time. board itself. Right. Not necessarily, like not so much the people on it. And I'm used to that. I think there is a lot of reading, which like I think to understand things, you have to like really kind of think them through. And sometimes I'm like, when I'm playing Spirit Island, I just want to like, yeah, yeah, play my keeper, get my coin and go ahead boom, and smack boom, people. Boom. Like, yeah. yeah. So well, here's the thing with him, because you can look at what he can do and they are crazy and cool things. But when you look at what those things are, you have to perfectly stack the right growth option with it or something like that. Because look, each growth option gives you a specific element which means the particular ability that is triggered with that element will be easier. So look, you have three and three card play and energy when you're fully upgraded, but you can spike it to seven or nine respectively with those ones, depending on which ones you pick. So I feel as if it can be a little bit intimidating knowing that you're going to have to structure your house just right to get that thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's a little bit more intimidating because that requires a little bit more. I got to ace this in order to get that thing. Lots of forethoughts. Yes. Lots yeah. of and that's not always my favorite way to play. Right. Because then if you don't set it up correctly, then you're having a frustrating playing experience. Yeah. And Spirit Island is so time intensive. It does take up quite right. a bit more time. It's like committing to play a more fun Monopoly. It's... And so if you're not having fun with it and you're like frustrated by your spirit and you're frustrated by the board. And if your teammates are getting mad, like you can't make me fast this turn. Or right. you can't make me reclaim. Why are you blighting my island? It's like, that's something I can do, but I can't do all of these things. Look at the web of possibilities that I can do. I can't access my entire web every single turn. I have to go and pick a certain thread of that web and use it specifically with the build. Why? Because guess what? Look at this guy's ceiling of possibility. It's very high, but look what's also high. The bar of entry. 
accessibility. Yeah. Sure, the ceiling of possibility is really high. It's also not nearly as accessible as other characters. So this spirit, we've compared to being a healer. When you're playing a MOBA game, you only notice the healer when things are going bad. If you are yeah. killing everyone and you have full health all the time and you're damage getting boosted, right, you right. don't thank the healer. But when you are low on health and continually dying, do your dying, job. Who's <laughs> healing? What's going Where on? Are you, yeah. Switch off mercy if you can. <laughs> it's it's like the offensive lineman. Yeah. It's like you never notice the lineman. Come in the football on, defense. Game until yeah, if there's a sack, then you notice the lineman. But if there's Vanquish a touchdown, jobs. it's a. This spirit is a thankless job. When it goes well, no one thanks you. But if it goes wrong, everyone's insulting you. Yeah, it's like you're not doing anything on your part of the island and you're not even helping me. Yep. So it's a tough spirit. I think Mm. this is the ultimate spirit for people to latch onto and find a main to learn to do well. Mm. Because I feel as if it requires the absolute most skill to do well. Because unlike Starlight, it doesn't have the extreme flexibility of Starlight. But I think Fractured Days does have a decent amount of flexibility. Because like I said, five card play, seven card play. And you can apply cheat codes to those. I know that you have to get your elements to apply those cheat codes. But still, like that's something that you can do. I think it's pretty dope. I was able to go to Han friendly with it. And be with that first and eight. Oh, it can be really fun. But like we're saying, it is not an easy road. Right. I would personally, guys, I would hold on to the pass returns again and pour time sideways and save your time for your cheat codes mm-hmm. and save your time for absolute stasis and blur the arc of years. That is my personal first impression take on those power cards. I think slip the flow of time should be the power you are chasing, not the pass returns again and poor time sideways. Yes, you can use those cards. And if you have a perfect use for those ones where it lines up perfectly, go for it. I'm just saying, in your day-to-day turn-to-turn stuff, I would say slip the flow of time. Do that one as often as you can. Mm-hmm. When The more and more you apply your cheat codes to stuff, the stronger and stronger you or your friends can get. So there is Fractured Days Split the Sky. Definitely someone who I thought was going to be even harder harder only because when you look at the unknown and before you try it i think this guy was just as hard as i thought he was going to be if that somehow makes yes sense. but i got to see how those cheat codes really affected the board with the dahan cards that i had and made me happy to see that i could pull this off again and again like whoa that's something i've never done before when have you done two slow powers in the fast phase and you repeated them again yeah so it's like what it's that's just cool so it's hey. a niche spirit like yeah i, I don't think, think so. everyone's gonna like playing fractured days but yeah. this is something i gravitate towards and i'm sure others do but yep. it's definitely a unique you uh, do love thinking analyzing and helping people i do it's definitely yep. your place it's kind of like vengeance where it just you have to be in that right mindset. Yep. It's not And that's like, the other thing. Sometimes when we play Spirit Island, it's at the end of a long day where you're already like stressed out from work and you've already just like thought so much. So then a spirit like fractured days is just like, uh, yep. too much, too much. I think if your team is okay, is good, or is great, meaning like the quality of characters that you have, you have okay team composition good team composition or great team composition, this guy can fit right in. Mm -hmm. I think this guy's going to look his worst when you have someone who's really bad composition on there. So because vengeance then, and because <laughs> because is it vengeance shadows for because days. while you're helping people <laughs> you're helping people who are already good so that they look better if you help someone who's already bad you're making them look better yes but remember you're taking up a slot on the team mm-hmm. so th- and they have to that... be good enough to help you with your board right. while you're helping them exactly. so is that person that bad person that you're elevating are they good enough to take care of both their board and your board. I don't know. We'll see. Future remains unseen in that regard. But uh, now I know why my Valentine's Day <laughs> card can be for you, babe. Aww. You're worth playing Fractured Day Split the Sky on. Oh, that's true love, folks. Oh, that's true love. <laughs> that's true love. Oh, yeah. yeah. They just kiss my heaven. I'm going to end the episode right there. Come back later for more content. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the Kindred Spirit Podcast. We appreciate you taking the time to do so. Feel free to visit us on our Instagram and Facebook page. You can find me on our Facebook page at the Kindred Spirit Podcast. To get a hold of John, check out our Instagram page at the KSP123. We look forward to hearing from you and seeing you in future episodes.